Hey everyone, this is Carl with Tabletop Tango with Eric. Hello. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to be continuing our series on Carl Learns Pathfinder, and we're going to look at the basic mechanics of Pathfinder. Previous episodes, we built a character, we leveled the character up, um, kind of jumped the gun on the leveling the character up, but now we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the basics of the system, how it works, um, you know, that sort of thing. And hopefully uh, I'll learn something. And I'll, I already played once, but this will probably tell me more about it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wipe that from your mind. And I'm going go to forget it. I'll blank slate. Zero. Yes, a blank slate. Blank slate. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think we talked about this a little bit about our goals for this series um, in the character creation video. But um, again, this is going to be not super in depth. Maybe we'll deal with that later. But this is going to be the very basics. I am just teaching Carl, like, so he can just get up to play. Um, and so we will touch on most things, but there, you know, the Pathfinder has so much minutia. It has so many small little mechanics, and and there's so many different types of things in it for everything that there's just no possible way we're going to get to all of it. So this is just a, just going to be the very basics. Yeah, I mean, the the book is what 640 pages or 680 pages. So we're we're really yeah, going to scratch the surface, something. and maybe later we'll dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. But for now. Um, we're going to hit the highlights, I guess. Enough that somebody yeah. could sit down at the table, start rolling dice, right? Yes, that's what we want. And yeah, feel free to interrupt me, uh, Carl. Feel free to ask me questions because I am teaching you, right? So if you were like, oh, well, it doesn't make sense or I want to know more about that, then I'll be good yep. for you just to jump yes, in. Yes, Sensei. Teach me. Okay. Teach me the ways <laughs> of the Pathfinder. I will. Uh, cool. I think we should get right into it. Um, so very basics. If anybody's played, you know... D and D, Pathfinder One E, or any D twenty game. I mean, it's it uses that basic system of rolling a D twenty um, and against a DC, and uh, the DCs are usually you know we're usually talking about like whatever the G and this again it's not going to be about what the GM does, but this is going to be something for like a skill check um, or against somebody's armor class, things like that. So yeah, so DCs are you know the basic number that you're trying to beat. Um, uh, when you roll your d20 and add all your your bonuses to it um and and uh, so and kind of jumping yeah. in what's what's kind of a typical range for like something easy something medium something hard well that's that's funny that you asked that because pathfinder actually uses um level based scaling and there is a mechanic you can there's like a gm rule in this where you can get rid of that but the basic game uses level based scaling and what that means is that compared to say like d like fi fifth edition or even older, uh, it, I mean, some games use it, but um, like fifth edition will just kind of have uh, very static numbers. Things never, it's called bounded accuracy. They never get up that much. Where in this proficiency, when you have proficiency in something, it's oh, your le your level, your character level is always added into that. And monsters kind of use that too. It's a little bit different. They have their own calculations as far as um, how their stuff is. Pathfinder is definitely harder game. It's definitely skewed to being a little bit harder. So there really isn't, like, you You get, you're, oh, you asked me, like, what's a good range? Well, there really isn't. <laughs> okay. I can't really tell you what a good range is. I mean, some things say the same, right? Like like a um, certain type of skill, like, you know, picking an easy lock would always be kind of like a DC, you know, 15 or something, right? That's, that's never going to go up, an easy lock. Um, but as you get more and more up in levels, right. it's just going to be almost trivial for you to beat that. Um, they have a lot of things in the game for like class based DCs or DCs based on item levels or blah, 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 blah. So there's, there's a lot, there's a lot more stuff we're, we're going to get into, but basically you have to know is that like some things will kind of stay the same and some things get harder, okay. um, All right. or go, travel along with you, with your level. Okay, great. So yeah, let's talk about it. So, so yeah, the basic die you're going to be using is a D20. Um, that's for most roles and the different types of roles there are. There's attack roles, there's skill roles, and there's uh, saving throw roles. Okay. Um, so, you know, most people will be familiar with these. Skill rolls are when you roll a skill. Um, attack rolls are when you want to attack something. And a um, saving throw is when... You don't know, don't, don't tell me calls you to... there's a saving throw. It's for saving throws. Yes. All right, I got that one. <laughs> there are saving throws. <laughs> uh, and there's only three types of saving throws. This is more of the classic, you know, 1E and 3.5. And I, I don't really know 4E, so... Um, uh, but there's only will, uh, which is related to wisdom... 
um, Fortitude, which is related to Constitution, and Reflex, which is related to Dexterity. And those are the only kind of three saving throws. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so those are the only kind of the three D20s, and then the rest is all damage rolls, right? Okay, great. Um, that's when you use all the other die. So so something you're pretty much familiar with. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, but, but let's talk about how you calculate your bonuses. So, um, uh, like, everything in the game... And, and DCs are a little bit, uh, you're like your saving throws or DCs for things are, is a little bit different. But um, uh, skill and attack rolls, it's all about your relevant, relevant attribute and your proficiency modifier. So, you know, relevant attribute, we, we talked about attributes a bit in the, in the character creation. Yep. But those are your strength, dexterity, constitution, mm-hmm. wisdom, yep. uh, charisma, and intelligence. Um, so whatever the relevant attribute is, you add that modifier and it's every even number of that attribute. So a 14 is plus two, um, a 16 would be a plus three, etc. So odd numbers don't give you a modifi- modifier. Um, and then it adds in your proficiency. Now, Pathfinder took a little bit different tack to this. Um, and proficiency, proficiency is calculated um, based on uh, your level of proficiency. So there's untrained, untrained, trained, expert, master, and legendary. And trained... Uh, untrained is just a zero. Trained is two. Uh, expert is four. Um, uh, master is six, and legendary is eight. And, and if I remember um, from the character creation, if you have to be at least proficient to get that level bonus added in yes. as you go up. So that's what I was going to add in. So when when if you have at least trained, then you also add your level in. So if you're level one, it would just be a plus one. If you're level five, it would be five. So say you're, um, you know, say you have a charisma of eighteen, um, and you're trained. You're, you're we'll say you're an expert in diplomacy, um, and you're level two. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, so that would be a plus four from your charisma, plus four from being expert, and then two from your level. So it would be a ten. Okay. Total. And then that's those are all the bonuses that we're now going to apply to our D twenty die roll. D twenty roll exactly. Yep. Okay. Now there are some other bonuses that are called out, and let's talk about them right now. Sure. Um, sure. There's four other types of bonuses. Um, there's item bonuses. These are bonuses you get from uh, items like magical items. Okay. Um, there is status bonuses. Status bonuses are mostly from spells. But there's uh, like buffs, but a couple of other things can give it to you. Um, same with um, circumstance bonuses. Circumstance bonuses are more. Uh, I don't. I'm trying to rack my brain. Um, there are some spells that do give circumstance bonuses too. Um, and uh, but so, there's sometimes there are other. Like a lot of times you can get them from like skills or feats. So what's or something. A, So give me an example of a circumstance bonus then. So a circumstance bonus is actually interesting. Like so, raising your shield. Is not an item bonus. That's actually a circumstance bonus. Okay, that you're defending with um, the shield. That's a circumstance. The so I, I th- I'm pretty sure that cover is also a circumstance bonus. So like you're not getting the same bonus like a shield and cover. So that's kind of like a situ- um, some games would call it a situational bonus or exactly. something like that. Um, and then there's unlisted bonuses. So unlisted bonus is just like something that doesn't have a, a, you know is not an item is not item status or circumstance miscellaneous. Now it's the important the thing about category. that. Yeah, it's miscellaneous, but the important thing about that is that bonuses of the same type do not stack, um, but unlisted bonuses will stack. I just there's just not many many of them. But um, so if you have say, um, so the um, okay, this is an interesting one. So um, um, the uh, shield spell uh, gives you a circumstance circumstance bonus to AC. Uh, so does a lot of monk stances. There's a monk stance called crane stance, will give you a circumstance bonus to AC. Now, so if you have that, if you're in that monk stance, the crane stance, uh, and you try to use a shield, well, only the greater one will affect. They won't stack. So um, same with if you were like had the shield spell and the shield, they just wouldn't stack if you're using them. So if you got two bu- um, two magic items that affect the same thing, you can't you can't stack. have two of the same same item bonus. You'd pick the greater of them. So okay, that's yeah exactly. Yep. So yeah, so again, it's it's your attribute plus your your proficiency bonus. Plus the, you know, the random other bonuses. Um, so we got all these bonuses, we add them up, and then we add that to our D20 roll, compare that against the DC. The DC, yeah. That we know some are Difficulty. consistent and some gr- grow over time, depending. Yeah, on- I mean, it depends. I mean, most of the time if you're fighting, you know, uh, fighting a creature, 
obviously those are going to grow as it stays yeah. their level well, yes. or above your level. Absolutely, right. right. Um, there's certain things like I, I can call it like a bard has an ability where um, he can modify their their cantrips. They can modify their cantrips, and it calls for a performance check based on their level. So obviously that will always kind of be you know that always kind of stays relevant. It's never like oh it just gets easy because it's always based on your you know the dice check is based on your level. Right. But then right. there's things like I said like you know a basic you know a door. Like a basic lock on a door, that's never going to get more difficult because <laughs> right. that's just always is what it is, yep, right? Absolutely. So it it's kind of situational. Now we're not going to talk about what, how unleveling that not using level scaling works because I don't know how that works. So, okay. But but the basic of the game uses that level scaling, right. which is important to know. So which is also kind of an interesting thing is that like you know in other games, right? Like say Five E, which most people kind of coming from this will be coming from Five E. Sure. Um, like. You know, a level one character can always have a chance pretty much of hitting a high level character. In this, it's almost impossible because, you know, what else scales? Well, you know, this is also how you calculate your AC. This is how you calculate anything that has a number. This is how you calculate. And, and well, let me talk about that. So AC and your saving throws are calculated in the same way, but plus 10. So what that means is like, um, uh, so yeah. So your like wit, your reflex save, right? Okay. It's your dexterity, plus your level. So if you were just trained in reflex or an expert in reflex, um, and then also your you know your level, right? Your level of so before I meant your level of, um, a proficiency, and then um, then your character level, your actual level, yeah, yeah. Okay. plus ten. So if you're just a level one character with an eighteen dex and you're expert in reflex, right? It would be four plus dex, four, four for being expert, so that's eight, uh, plus one for your level, nine plus ten. Okay, yep. Oh, no, no, I lied. I'm sorry. I lied. <laughs> it would still just be a plus nine. Uh, but if you were ever trying to figure out somebody's DC, then it would be a plus ten. So they often call in the game, like, your athletics DC, right? That would be your, like, your total athletics So, like, skill. if somebody's going up an opposed role... There's a DC yeah. that you're opposing then in an opposed role, or like a lot of there's a lot of skill actions in the game. So, um, like, uh, so let's use athletics for example. So uh, the grapple skill goes against somebody's fortitude save DC. So somebody was trying to grapple you, you would add you, your fortified your fortitude modifier plus ten. That's okay. your DC. So when everything it. calls for your DC, it's always plus ten. Okay. Um, uh, same same thing with AC. So AC is the, it works the same way, right? Um, but then it has an item bonus depending on what you're wearing. So I think that's probably good for now. That we don't want to get people too confused okay. in this. <laughs> right. Do you have any so, other questions? So I think. Or? Well, I, oh wow, I'm, I'm really saturating here. But I, I think the mm -hmm. um, what I take away from all that is that there's a consistency in how things are calculated and the slots yes. that you talked about. You know, attribute proficiency level and then there's things like item all those those slots are consistent throughout the game and are used consistently to define um, these values that you're using for um, other purposes so as long as you understand that mechanic and how those work together yeah. you're, you're in good shape for sort of the overall kind of structure right yeah okay. and once you plug them in on your sheet then you're good to go and no again the only roles you're going to look to do is skill attack and saving throws right and then I said, if the GM ever asks for your DC of something, then that's, you know, whatever he's asking for plus 10. Okay, good. Got um, it. Got it. Got it. And AC, AC is considered a DC, which we probably will talk about in a different episode, why that's important. But anytime there's a debuff to something that says it affects, you know, everything, then it will affect your AC as well. So that's just something to oh, know is okay. that AC is technically somebody, a DC, an AC DC. Oh, um, rock on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, cool. I think, so that's the very, very basics of just, you know, that's how you roll a die. Okay. Um, awesome. And then I think let's let's just go into the uh, well, very well, basic. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're going to go back. So we rolled a die. We add the values. Are, are you going to talk a little bit about critical hits and misses and stuff like that? Oh, based on sure. That roll? Yeah. Um, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. So the critical, the critical system is very interesting. So um, it works a little bit differently than other games. Um, while a D20 and a D, uh, rolling a one, uh, rolling a 20 on a D20, rolling a one on a D20, still do something, they're not automatically 
a critical hit or a critical miss, and I'll explain that. So the very basic for a critical either success or a critical miss is either 10 above or 10 below the DC. So okay. say if your DC was a 20 and you rolled a 30, um, say like on an attack roll, that would be a critical attack. It would be a critical hit, right? Um, so you don't have to necessarily roll a 20 for that to happen. Okay, got right? it. And somebody who's and, a, and something that's a higher level thing has a better chance of critting against you or you against it if you're higher level, right? Because you're adding in your level to everything. Okay, that makes so, total sense. Um, so yeah, anytime you roll 10 over the DC, that's a critical hit. Or if it's 10 below, um, you know, say if it was like the GM asked you to roll a reflex save and you were trying to get a 22 and you rolled a 12, well, that was a... That's a critical failure. Um, and rolling a natural 20 or a 1, well, what that does is it puts up either a step up or a step below, like, your success. So, so it's a, there's so it's critical a high, failure. So there's a critical, critical, <laughs> kind of. Yes. And, and so most things in the game, attacks, spells, and spells either are, like, saving throw spells or attack spells, and, and certainly also skills. While not always true, most of the time they have like a critical failure result, a failure result, a success result, or a critical success result. So there's okay. always kind of those four levels of success. All right, that makes a lot of sense. I got and it. And when you roll, say say that you know you rolled a, a, a natural twenty, and uh, you know your roll result was oh it would have been a failure because you're going against something so high, right? Right. Like you're going at something that is so that D20 would actually push you up to a success. Or if that you rolled the D20, which happens most of the time, and you would have gotten a success, I mean, that's what's normally going to happen. Um, but not a critical success. Well, that D20 then put you over to a critical success. Um, okay. So it, it, it kind of adjusts your success one level, if that makes sense. So I think you were talking a little bit about this before, and it was something you liked about it, which was, you know, uh, D&D's kind of got, you got crits, and um, that's about it. But uh, Pathfinder gives you that gradation. And that's not, yes. you see that a lot in some newer games where there's, you know, success, there's uh, a critical success, and sometimes games even have success, but with a... Like another one. With a, yeah. with, a, with a problem or something like that. But So it's yeah. nice to have a little more of that granularity. Um, I think when I... Oh, it's... I think when I was playing great. the game, um, that, that little pickup game that my character was created for, there was a couple of roles where it's like, holy smokes, you know, I really smoked that guy and he failed so yeah. so bad that the damage just was through the roof. And that was a that was a pretty exciting feeling, to be honest. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I definitely think it's really fun and it rewards, you know, it, I, I, it, just, it just feels better to me than just the, the static, oh, 20 is a crit. And <clears throat> in D&D, &D, you know, it only really, crits are only really there for attack rolls. By the r rules, there's no crits in skill checks. Um, or saving uh, or saving throws, but in this there are. I mean, I mean, skills will have kind of not all skills, right. but a lot of the skill like and there's and again there's a ton. Each skill has a myriad of like um, skill actions. So uh, each skill has a bunch of stuff you can do with them that have their own kind of specific actions. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. So we're not going to get into that here. We won't get but, into that um, right now. Okay. Fair enough. But so yeah. So when I'm talking about this, it, not not every single thing does, but a lot of them do have these different like, oh, this what happens on a success or a critical success, right? Um, so it definitely makes it more interesting. Um, cool. So now that you understand that, let let's go into the most important. Now, did you want to know about a little bit about? I mean, it uses. Let's let's just talk about encounter mode. Right, because that's the most important so, thing so, for you to understand. So, did you talk about? Maybe I missed it, but you should kind of set the stage as to there's three modes kind of in the game. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. So they kind of just break it down into three different modes, um, and that's where kind of all the rules and all the kind of the actions that you can do fall underneath them. It's kind of the three modes of the game. So anytime you're playing the game, you're you're usually playing in one of these modes. Or you're just role playing, right? Right, sure. <laughs> which doesn't really need to be quantified. But basically, there's encounter mode, which is just kind of there for. It's mostly there for combat, but it can also be used for like a tense, like sneaking situation if you kind of need to. 
have initiative. Basically, encounter moments usually happening with initiative. Right, and it's and it's a there. short scale. We're talking time frames yeah. that are very, very, very short, right? Very, very short, right. exactly. Okay. And that's definitely how it kind of goes along with it. Um, and then you have expiration mode. And expiration mode is more like where, you know, not as short timing as you were talking about with encounter mode, but more about, you know, when you're in the dungeon searching around. And, and it's kind of just a way to, there's very specific actions of like, okay, well, what are you doing during this? And I like this a lot. Because one of the problems, at least from 5e, I find is that, you know, oh, I check for traps, I check for traps, I check for traps. It gets a little old doing a lot of rolls. Um, this kind of very specifically says, okay, this is what you're doing, this is what you're doing, this is what you're doing. So I know what you're doing, right? Okay. You can only do sure. one of these things. That makes and a lot of sense. And that's obviously, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. If, for a time, this is for like, you know, we're talking about more in the hours, right? Not in the seconds. This is for right. the hours. Okay. Um, and then the third mode is downtime mode, and this is where you have you know days to months to years. This is what this is the the mode for that. So um, okay, and so we're yeah, going to talk about encounter mode, modes. which is that short period action, what have yes. you mode. Okay, awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, um, cool. So encounter mode. This is mostly going to be for combat, um, and. Uh, I mean, this mostly begins with initiative, so we'll talk about right. initiative. So, um, it works kind of similar to other games, but it has its own twist, and I really, really like how they did initiative. Um, where, um, so initiative works where, you know, you roll your d20, and then um, you add in usually perception. So, it's your perception skill okay. that gets added on top of that. Um, and that's, you know, the generally, it's usually perception. Now, perception is an interesting skill on its own. Because unlike all the other skills, you can't really increase it willy-nilly. All the classes kind of start with a set perception and give you raises to it independently of your skill raises, which we talk about in the character creation video. Right. Um, so, um, and now there's ways that you can, there's like feats that you can do to get bonuses for this that kind of just give plus two to initiative rolls. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you roll your die, you, you add whatever um, skill, it's usually perception, um, and then... Um, you're kind of set in your order. Um, uh, now you can do things like you can delay um, things that can change your order, but usually you're kind of set. It's not like it's not changing every round. It's just kind of set. Now the interesting thing with initiative in this game is that it doesn't always have to be perception. The other two most common skills are deception and stealth. Um, obviously, if you were kind of sneaking. While, uh, you know, whatever happens caused you to roll initiative, then you can choose to use stealth. Um, same thing with deception. If you're kind of lying to somebody and kind of trick them or create a diversion or something. Um, but the cool thing is that you can actually use any skill in the game as long as you can justify it to the GM. If it was kind of what you were doing when initiative was happening. Right. So when I played my bard character, I was able to use performance at times because that's kind of what I was doing when 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 that when that, you know poop hit the fan <laughs> yeah, as okay, it were yeah, okay <laughs> um so so yeah so so that's basis of initiative um yep okay uh very that makes sense right yep that that's totally normal yep for sure okay um, awesome yeah totally normal um so cool so it, it's broken into rounds and turns so pretty similar to most people so the yep. round is kind of like the whole like you know here's the first round of combat where everybody individually takes their turns now the interesting thing to know here is there's no surprise rounds in pathfinder um so if you do surprise somebody often it'll just be the people who are unaware kind of have like you know uh negatives to their initiative role um but if if you haven't taken your turn yet you don't have your um you don't have your uh reaction so the th I'll talk about that. In your turn, you can do actions, uh, you have reactions, and you have free actions. Those are the kind of the three main things. Um, right. So now, so now you're getting into kind of that action economy, right? Yeah. Now. Okay. I'll talk. Yeah, about the action economy. So um, actions are something that you do on your turn. They're pretty much you know most of the game you're doing actions, and that's in and out of combat, um, and those are kind of things that. Um, um, there's a lot of different types of actions, uh, but basically you have three actions on your turn. Um, right. And, and um, some things that you choose to do will be only one action, and some things are multiple actions. So the basic, you know, single actions that I can talk about are 
attacking, right? Yep. Uh, yep. Just a basic attack, which is called a strike, is just one action. Um, also, movement is actually an action. It's called striding. Um, so if you want to move, you have to spend a stride action. I don't know why they called it that. That's such a strange name, but <laughs> because I, I will tell you why. And the, you know, yeah, I guess they could have just called it move. It, why they didn't call it move is because stride is a it has the move tag on it, um, where a lot of things have. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things that will have like these little these little tags. I think it's called. Um, and why that's important is because there's a lot of things that will interact with it in in Pathfinder. So a very basic example of that is attacks of opportunities, and attacks of opportunities um, will often say that any um, like anything with the move. Sorry, I'm trying to find the exact. I don't want to get the um, the term wrong. Um, yeah, heaven, heaven forbid. We don't want to have uh, nasty grams. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> yeah, I want. I want to make sure. I'm, uh, I think it's tag, but uh, um, uh, let's see. So, so, so basically that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, they have like every everything in the game has these little tags. Okay. Uh, I, I think what it's called. I but but basically when you look at something, it'll be underneath the the name of the action. So like here, I'll, I'll even use the book for example. If you can see like under that, there's a little red square. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, that's like a little tag. So why they didn't call it move is because there's a lot of specific things that are moves, right? Um. Uh, type of move action. So stride is a move action. Step is a move action. Stand is a move action. Oh, okay. Um, I start to get... And so something like Attack of Opportunity, which will specifically say, um, you know, there, there's a trigger. So a lot of... This is getting into now a... Um, Sorry, I brought you down a rabbit uh, hole. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a rabbit hole. Fine. But like a, Attack of Opportunity is, is a reaction. We were talking about reactions. Um, and um, usually rea reactions are something that you kind of do not on your turn something that you do out of your turn and you only have one reaction um and usually they have a trigger right so well, what will trigger them and it will list triggers so if attack opportunities have a, a trigger that one of them is a move action if something does a move action within within your um reach um and so it could be somebody striding but it could also be somebody standing up so that's why they didn't just call it like movement um, okay but yeah Got so it. basically very very simple actions are stuff like striking um, uh, striding, striding is being able to use your movement up to your speed. There's another one that we have to talk about called stepping. Um, stepping is a five foot move, but it does not trigger reactions. So if you wanted to, um, you know, if, if you think somebody has an attack of opportunity, then you want to step. Um, you don't just want to stride. Now, the interesting thing about Pathfinder is that most things do not have attack of opportunities. Attack of opportunity is really only for th for characters or for like like uh, monsters that are kind of like tr very trained like fighters are the only class that actually start with attack of opportunities um but monks rangers and barbarians can all and champions can all kind of get them if they spend a feat so so, so attack of opportunities is more of a feat as opposed to just a fundamental thing that all characters yes have. it is not a fundamental okay. thing like say 5e or even savage worlds right um uh so yeah so you have three actions on your turn um to do it with you will now a lot of two action or three action things are usually spells so spells will most of the majority of the time be a two action activity right um right. with their own kind of specific um you know one will be somatic one will be verbal um so yeah um and you can kind of split them up however you want so a one action <laughs> Two action or three action. The dogs are very excited today. <laughs> yeah, the dogs <laughs> got very excited upstairs. Um, now, one thing to know is that uh, there is multi-attack penalties, a map, but it only applies to strikes, right? So if you ever make an attack roll, that's always going to apply. Um, if you try to make another attack roll in a turn, now this can be a you know, melee strike, it could be a range strike, it could be a spell attack. Um, if you're ever able to make more than one, you take what's called a multi-attack multi penalty. And, and that's which is and that's regardless of uh, the mode of it. So you can't you can't have like a crossbow, fire it, drop it, attack, 
you're still going to have that multi-action penalty. doesn't matter the mode Yeah, of the it's whenever you roll right. more than one attack roll yep. in your turn, you take that. Um, and it basically, your second attack will always be a ne at negative 5, and your third or more will always be at negative 10. Now, there's a couple of things that modify that. Um, the weapons that have what's called are agile weapons will reduce those by 1 and 2. So if it's an agile weapon, it'll only be a minus 4 for the second attack, and then a minus 8 for the third attack. So something like a dagger, then, for example. Yeah. Something like a that. A dagger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, exactly. Um, also, like, there's a couple of there's a couple of other things like like rangers can take an ability which which decreases that. So there's definitely a couple of other ways to mitigate that, but that's basically what it is. And okay. then there's obviously a lot of special abilities, usually from feats, that might be like, oh, this is a two action ability that will increase your multi attack, attack penalty by two, or so, or, or you know, uh, it counts as two it counts as two attacks. Uh, for your multi-action penalty, okay. but you you know calculate either before. So you just have to read each in, each individual thing. The important thing to know is that what a multi-attack penalty is and how it's applied. Okay. Um, so we're so and again, uh, a strikes they work like what we talked about before. They're like a skill attack. So you add your, you know, your relevant attribute to the attack. You add your relevant um, proficiency, um, you know, and, and your class level usually, uh, your character level. Okay, so um, so so for our for an example, comes to my turn, I can stride, attack, and stride again. Yeah. If I want, because I can have two of those move type actions. Yeah. Um or I can stride or I can attack, stride, and then if I am uh spellcaster's got cantrips that take one action, I can fire one of those off too. Yes. Yep, okay. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes total sense. And, and, and there's a lot of other, you know, there's a lot of other basic act. Like I said, every skill has its own action. Um, the spells they have their kind of own actions, and then yes. there's basic actions. I, I'm not going to go into everything, but yeah, the basic ones are, um, you know, as we said, <laughs> stepping, standing, striding, striking. Um, they're all in the book. One all of the, in the book. <laughs> one of the big, yeah, they're all in the book. One of the big thing I want to call out, um, uh, that's important is um, recall knowledge, which is done a lot out of combat but can be done in combat as well um which can be important just because like there's so many different creatures with so many different stats and weaknesses and blah blah, blah. and we'll talk about that in a little bit um but th th that's another thing that's often used a lot in combat some classes get bonuses for using them but um recall knowledge and we talked about it a little bit in the character creation so, so that's that's one where yeah uh, i was gonna say so that's the sort of thing i'm in combat with a troll aha uh -huh, i know yes. that they're susceptible to fire Ooh, look at me go well you might not know that that's why you're going to ask i want to do recall knowledge right. on the troll right. and then the gm will usually have you roll a certain skill um usually it's one of the kind of main four knowledge magical ones but there's also which is like um arcana nature religion and occult but there's also stuff like society which could use a lot or um, maybe crafting for alchemical stuff or even lore skills. Okay. Got it. Um, Makes sense. That's another big one. So let's talk a little bit. We talked about attack for opportunity already. Yep. So I jumped the gun on that. Um, there's also stuff uh, flanking. So flanking, um, if you, if there's ever um, uh, two, uh, if you and an ally are within, within reach of the same creature and you're on opposite ends, then you're flanking. And what that means is that um, if you're, if you're flanking something, then then it's flat-footed to you. Now, flat-footed is used a lot. Flat-footed is a um, minus two to their AC, and um, <clears throat> and and that's actually a minus two circumstance penalty. So remember, like we talked about before, so, and those can um, those can stack, right? The circumstance penalties. No, circumstance penalties cannot stack. Oh, that's right. Um, it's the miscellaneous ones that can. Okay, right, right. Mi miscellaneous ones, yeah. Um, so yeah, like like you talked about, circumstance penalties are usually from like something, you know, like something in the environment, right? right. That's that's causing it to be this right. way. Um, so that's that's the basic flank. And flanking comes up a lot, so, right? So, because so does flanking yeah. if more than one character is um, engaging the enemy, does that count as flanking, or do they have to be on opposite sides of the? They have to be on opposite ends of sides. Okay. And you know, just because like say you know, just because me and you might be flanking a monster. Uh, Barry, who's coming up from the side, would not be getting flat footed. It's, they would not be flat footed against him. So it doesn't like cause flat footed for everybody. It's only for the people who are actually flanking. Okay. All right. 
Um, and it's always within your reach. So if you have a, if a reach weapon, um, you know, you don't have to be adjacent to them. Right. As long as, right. As long as you can reach it from a combat effectiveness yeah. standpoint. If you're threatening you're okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Got it. Um, uh, cool. Uh, and we talked a little bit about this before, but cover. Um, cover is when, um, uh, you know, there's something blocking you from whatever's trying to attack you or vice versa. Um, there's three types of cover, lesser, standard, and greater. Um, lesser is usually... Uh, like a person's in the way, oh, okay. basically. All right. Um, uh, standard is kind of like half of you is blocked, and that's uh, plus two to AC, reflex, and stealth, and you can use that to hide behind. And then there's also greater cover, which is like most of you, and that's plus four to AC, reflex, and stealth, and you can use it to hide. Okay. Um, now there's an action called take cover that you can do. Which basically means that if you're in, it'll upgrade your cover by one if you spend that action. Well, assuming there's cover available, right? Um, if there's cover available, but one thing you can do if you're prone, you can use that to take cover and get standard cover. So if you're prone, you're actually flat-footed from things. Um, so if you're prone, attack rolls against you, they get flat-footed on you. Okay. Um, but you can use an action to spend to take cover, and you'll actually get, you know, kind of mitigate the AC, and you get those bonuses to reflex. Oh, okay. Um, All right, that makes sense. So cool. Yeah, I mean, like again, that that's the uh, very very basic of encounter mode and combat. Uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, now hit points. Um, so hit points are hit you points. know whenever you you attack and you do damage. Yeah, so you know you roll your attack. He tells you whether you, the GM tells you whether you're successful or you crit succeed or whatever, um, and then you roll your damage die, um, uh, which will, you know the well, the thing the thing that you're doing will say what it is. Um, and that b directly goes against hit points. Uh, so you have your hit point pool, and your hit point pool is very easily. There's no rolling for hit points in this game. Um, it's always your ancestry gives you a base. So um, like it might say your ancestry will say oh eight points, um, and then your class will have a certain amount. So most martial classes are ten, um, and then it's so so it's always like your ancestry plus your class times level. So. If you're level five, right, and you're a fighter, which has uh, 10 hit points per level, that's 50 hit points plus your ancestry, which we could say is eight, 58, plus your con modifier. Right. Right. Um, so that's... Sort of which is per level as well. So I'm sorry. So that would be another... Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so that's nice that you don't have to worry about a bad roll screwing up when yes. you're leveling, for sure. Um, does take away a little the interesting uh you know i've got a fighter who's kind of weak on hit points but maybe better on something else but. i i actually i do like the non-randomizing also it kind of uh pathfinder is hard so it, it, the math's pretty tight so not having you right. know those hit points where you need them to be is pretty important right so so we're, um, but so the quick thing i want to talk about with damage is just real quick for you to understand is weaknesses and resistances okay great so if you're a ten, this is where kind of recall knowledge can come up. If if we're talking about um, if something has a weakness to a certain damage type, then it, it'll usually list like weakness, say um, you know, positive five, right? A lot of undead might have weakness to positive damage. So that's um, so, what that means so is that positive kind of energy damage or positive yes. damage. Okay. Uh, so you didn't mean like plus damage. damage. You mean there's a no, type no, no, called sorry. positive, uh, right? So there's many different damage types. A lot of the, most of them are elemental. There's like fire, acid, electricity, you know, things like that. There's also positive and negative. There's also alignment damage, which doesn't come up that much. Uh, good or evil or whatever. Um, but yeah, so positive damage. Um, so a lot of undead might have weakness to it. And it, okay. their stat block will list weakness five. The most, and again, this is not something that's important for you as a player to really understand that part. But just know that like... If you know that undead has a weakness to it, then you want to try to do that damage. Because whenever you do any positive damage to it, it doesn't matter if you did one positive damage, it doesn't matter if you did 30 positive damage, they take uh, you know, that number listed. So if it was weakness 5, they would just take an automatic 5 damage. Plus what you rolled, right? Yeah, plus what you rolled. Okay, so cool. even if you only did one... Um, and, and, and often those things will have a lot of resistances, right? Resistance sure. kind of works the same sure. way. If it said resistant five to say negative damage, um, <clears throat> then it would just res it would just always reduce that amount. Um, and then things can be completely immune to something. So often they might be immune to negative. But they just won't take any negative damage at all. And actually, undead are healed by negative damage. Oh, nice. So, 
So that's why, like, re having knowledge about whatever creature you're fighting is really important. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so it's nice to see that those um, knowledge skills that sometimes aren't really don't really come into play in some games come into play here. That's nice. Oh, they that's are cool. absolutely huge in this game. And even if you're trying to, like, metagame it, I mean, there's just so many different types of um, creatures, and the GM can make their own creatures that it's 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 often pretty hard um to uh you know to just kind of metagame everything right 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 um so there's something that I want, the last thing i want to talk about that's important to you to understand is well i guess there's kind of two things but um let's talk about dying right because you because you've told me before you... that uh pathfinder is a little more um harsh than D, D is yes right uh yes exactly um, okay, cool. So, um, if you're ever reduced to zero hit points, uh, then you immediately get go into the dying condition, it's called. Um, now, this changes your initiative to before the monster that killed you, or that put you down, which is actually, you might think that's weird, but it's actually really important to do, like, you can kind of, maybe people can get healing off or something before the thing that's right next to you, you know, go that gets to go. Okay, makes sense, um, sure. So, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm just gonna make sure I get this everything right. Um, okay, so when you have the dying condition, you're, you're, uh, you automatically drop, you're incapacitated, which means you can't really do anything. You go to before the creature that, that put you into the dying, um, and then you, you get what's called the dying one condition. Dying one. Um, dying as number one. Okay. Yes. It, so the dying is actually a condition. Now... There's a ton of conditions in this game. We're not going to go over them all right now, but this is an important one to know right now is, is the dying condition. Um, and so you'll start with dying one. Unless the attack that hit you was actually a critical attack, then you'll start at dying two, um, which is not good. Yeah. Um, now, there's something else that it's called the wounded condition. If you have the wounded condition then it automatically increases your dying condition by that amount. So say you had wounded one okay. <laughs> and somebody brought you to zero HP, you'd start at dying two. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? It makes sense, but it sounds kind of complicated. Okay. So, <laughs> and, But I, I'll, I'll explain why it sounds a little bit complicated, but it actually, it's actually rather, it's actually rather, it's actually kind of elegant. There's some other things that are complicating this game, but I actually think this is a good idea, but I'll, I'll tell you why. So, um, uh, basically, when when it's your turn and you're you have the dying condition, you have to make a it's called a recovery check, um, <clears throat> which is you just rolling a flat roll. So it's just you rolling a d twenty. Okay. So whenever there's something a flat roll is asking you, it's it's it, you just roll a straight d twenty, and you're trying to get a it's a flat check of a DC equal to ten plus your current dying condition. Ten plus um, dying condition. So dying one. Yeah. Would be so 10 if you were plus dying one. one Right? It'll be a, a DC of 11. Okay. And dying two is DC okay. of 12. Exactly. Okay. Um, now, if at any time you get to a dying four, you die. Like, that's it. Uh, reincarnation in this game is super hard. It, there's no easy spell. It's actually like a really expensive ritual you have to do, and it doesn't always work. So there's no easy like oh we'll just bring to the you know priest or we just have you know a bunch of reincarnation right, uh, right, right. Uh, re whatever it is you know it is not it is very once you die like it's it's much harder it, you can definitely be done it's just much harder so if you ever get to dying four you're dead now back to that recovery check you're rolling a flat d20 um, no bonuses with that nothing DC, just flat nothing just dc equal to ten plus your current dying condition if you fail your dying value increases by one. Woo. If you critically fail, your dying value increases by two. Woo. Now, a success just reduces it by one. So say you were dying two, so you had to go DC right. against a 12, sure. and you and you just rolled a success, then you're just dying one, and you still have to make But you're still dying one. You're not turn. like at base exactly. or anything like that. Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, and then if you critically succeed, then it just re reduces it by two. So again... That doesn't automatically mean you're going to get out, right? Right, right. Um, now, the wounded one is what I talked about. Now, any time that you lose the dying condition. Now, this is either whether you, you know, got your dying from 1 to 0. So, 
say you had dying one and you rolled a success and you got to dying zero or somebody used healing on you either um uh either like the skill uh, medicine uh with with the special feat called combat healing okay um or somebody used magical healing which is the most likely one or like a potion in your mouth right um <clears throat> You actually, you lose the dying condition, but you gain the wounded one condition, right? Okay. Now, the wounded condition, which we talked about before, uh, it, it, it only goes away um, if somebody successfully restores hit points to you with treat wounds, um, which takes some time. Um, so not battle medicine, right? So treat wounds is usually a 10 minute activity Okay. or you, uh, fully, or you're fully restored to hit points somehow and you rest for 10 minutes. So, so it sounds like if you're in combat and somebody takes you down yeah. to zero and you hit the dying condition and yeah. then you make your good roll and you come back up or somebody does something to help you and you get, you still get that wounded basically for the yes. rest of combat. And as you said, for the rest of combat right, uh, or, and until somebody can spend yeah, 10 minutes helping you out which obviously can't be done necessarily doing a time. medicine check if somebody has that or do you do like a long rest right? right now the tricky thing with wounded is that anytime so the wounded sticks with you no matter what so say you were you know you you went down you got up uh you know so you have wounded one you went down again right uh and then you got up again you'd still have that wounded condition and not only that anytime that you like say say, say that you had a wound, wounded condition when you were dying Right. Uh, you already had it, and then you got you know hit points again. You came up. Then you'd have wounded two. Right. So that wounded. I was going to ask that. So now you've got a wounded yeah. two, and then if you go down again, you said that wounded gets added in, so you immediately go to dying two. Oh, you'd actually immediately go to dying three. Oh, it's plus Remember, one. It's plus you one. go down. You're at dying one. So at that point, <laughs> it's so hard for you to get back up. So there's no like, you know, ping ponging, right? With like, oh, going down, going up. Like, pretty much, you can go down twice. And that's it. Unless there's somebody who the, comes in with magical healing or something and really pounds no, on you. No, I mean, the, the, the thing is, even with magical healing, right, that, doesn't, that does not decrease your wounded. So, well, yeah, I get true. what you're saying. Like, so if you went down and then... But, like, think of it this way. If you have wounded three... Right, you're toast, and you died. You're you're dead. Yeah, you're toast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if you have wounded two and somebody critically hit you, you're dead. So I guess in in the play, you've been doing an actual play in Pathfinder. Yeah. Um, I haven't caught all of them, um, but that probably drives you guys to move to disengage from combat a lot more often than you might in a D and D game. It's like, hey, we're yeah, we're overpowered. <laughs> we're getting hit. We're not getting knocked too close to the. Let's get out of here. Or, or is it still damn the I mean, torpedoes? You know, it, it's it's it depends. I think the GM. So I was in. This is the second campaign we're in. We've done some one shots, but two. In the first game, some more people did die. Um, it's just very hard. Um, it, it, it like I said, it is more difficult. So it depends kind of on your group and what the GM is kind of doing. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. Um, so luckily, we haven't had anybody die, or you know, yet. <laughs> so uh but yeah it's definitely more deadly and, and that's i just wanted to go over the dying stuff with you because it is now there are just there is a couple ways to increase this like there's certain feats general feats uh like toughness and die hard which actually uh you know either either reduce that it's either nine plus you're dying or you can take up dying five kind of thing um so there's a couple of ways that you can make yourself tougher and anybody can do that so it doesn't matter if you're a fighter, a barbarian, or a wizard. Um, it doesn't matter about that. It's more about if you take those general feats. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, that make it tougher. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so that's kind. So of yeah, the, is there any other questions that you had? Like, because that's kind of just the very basics. Of yeah. So let me walk through it. We we yeah, we talked about DC. We talked about how the certain um, different classes of bonuses come together and they can't stack within the same classification except for the yeah. miscellaneous ones which i forget the name of talk just they're just un, there's whatever unlisted, unlisted. It just doesn't, um they're we, very rare so there's most of them aren't like that and then we talked about remember your sorcerer character let's just real quickly sorcerer. Your sorcerer, in the character creation video i believe that feet or your bloodline i think it was your feet uh because remember you're you're both your you took a class feet and your bloodline both yep. gave you a bonus to your 
to the same thing, right? But they stacked, right? Because um, because they were different bonuses. And because you're actually, I think it was that feat was actually an unlisted bonus. So it's one of the very few, um, which is called Dangerous Sorcery. Um, oh no, Dangerous Sorcery, sorry, is is a status bonus. Um, so it must have been your bloodline. Um, is very one of the few um, things that just doesn't have a bonus listed to it okay. in the game. Yeah, so that so I got all those, got stacked then. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Go. Cool. Um, we talked a little bit about um, action economy. Um key things were three actions there are reactions multi-attack penalties um certain things take one some could take longer spells can typically take a couple um talked a little bit about flanking attack of opportunity and then the general hit points ac damage kind of things and then you yeah. took us through where dying um can be it can be more deadly than D D because or D fifth edition at least because of that um you know different conditions not less, wounded. not less deadly yeah. than uh, AD and D first edition, which is a little more harsher. <laughs> but you know, yeah. uh, we don't. Pl- those are old school games. We don't play them as much anymore. So, I, um, I guess the only thing I, I wanted to, one thing I forgot that we touched on was the surprise round. Oh, so the one okay. thing to know that if you know when if you haven't taken a turn yet, you don't have your reaction. So you always get reaction at the beginning of your turn. Okay. So if you haven't taken a turn yet, you don't have your reaction. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of touch on is just movement a little bit more. Okay. So I said that one of the basic actions is striding. And that's you, you when you do a stride, you always move up to your speed. Um, so um, usually use, most speeds are based on your ancestry. Uh, they're mostly mostly 25 um, feet. And it's, it's five foot squares, right? So you can basically move five squares. Um, but then there's a lot of like classes will give bonuses or spells will give bonuses or there's feats that you can take to increase that speed. Okay, got it. Um, and then every other so in this game it's it's five feet per square and every other diagonal um, counts as ten feet. Okay. So that's the basics of movement. So basically, say you were moving diagonally, right? You want to move diagonally two squares. Um, it would be fifteen feet of movement because it would be five feet five for the feet, first square and, and then, then the second one 10 is feet. ten feet. Okay. Yeah. To move two squares. Okay. Makes sense. Makes um, sense. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is the very basics, but I'm ready. To, I, I I think that's kind of the, about the limit to what I understood because um, you helped me a little bit through, and then my sorcerer came in, and I I kind of got the base. Fortunately, you kind of filled the sheet in, and once that sheet's filled in, and all those stacking bonuses yeah. are put down as a number, it really makes things pretty clear. Um, cause in yeah. the end, all these different bonuses we're talking about, they come down to a number except for situational, which get added in as things change. But a lot of this stuff is kind of static at your level. Um, yeah. you know, so, uh, definitely an interesting system. Um, the game I played, I pretty, I enjoyed it a lot. I got to use my equivalent of a fireball, my, uh, splash mountain and <laughs> your you know, water ball. all the other folks were kind of in awe that I took a bunch of people out. It was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, and it was pretty clean, um, that whole casting. Oh, this is going to take two. This will take three. You know, I can move. Yeah. I can't. Um, I've got cantrips, so I was able to do things like cantrip, move, and then actually use a weapon if I want. So there's a lot of options that you don't typically, you know, in the old school D&D, get that kind of, you know, I'm doing a thing, yeah, and that's flexible. what I get. But now it, it gives you a lot of flexibility. I, I really like that. I thought that was yeah. nice. And then, you know, obviously coming from Savage Worlds, I play a lot. That action economy made sense to me. You know, you're doing For things sure. and you got multiple and they certain things take a certain amount of time. It, it all really was pretty clear and, and made a lot that, of sense. So, The only thing that I like, and I, and I know why Savage Rules does it, but I actually like it a little bit more in this, is that the map is only for attacks. And that it's... And I get... I mean, I understand why Savage Rules has to do it differently. Um, but because of that and because those attacks... Because it changes, you know, based on the attacks, uh-huh. which is an old school way too... Um, but that makes it easier that you don't have to like oh ahead of time be like oh I take this negative right it's only like when you do the action is when you would take the negative so you don't have right. to think about it ahead of time right well that, uh, the one true. the one yeah. very very final thing I guess is just hero points in this game um, hero points allow you to do a reroll okay and you always take the new amount um, oh you always take uh, the new we, roll okay well we play it where you can choose it's like a home rule I think most people do it that way um, and you always start with one so. In the difference to 5e, where you have to kind of earn them, and you can still earn them in this game, 
um, you always get to start with one at very least. At, so, at the beginning of a session? Or, beginning of a session, okay. yeah. So one, each, once per session. So each session you have a hero point, which you can use to uh, equivalent, give yourself advantage, right? In yeah, re roll on any, any yeah, roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, nice. And you can earn more as you go along. So it's it's a little bit yes. a little bit like Savage Worlds Benny's a little bit in a, in a sense. Um, nice. For sure. And I, that's how I would choose to play it is, you know, not just because of a heroic deeds. Also, if somebody's playing to their flaws and does something that's like, oh, they put everybody in jeopardy because of their flaw, then I would probably give them a hero point yeah, for that. Nice. Um, nice. That, that's a, that's, that's another nice addition there for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any other uh, final... Final thoughts that you have, um, other than I know you like this game a lot. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> you sing its praises. I mean, so. there, there's a lot. I mean, it's not perfect, obviously. There's a lot. But yeah, I do like it a lot, especially for fantasy. It's very fun to make a character. Um, like I said, this is the, the very basics. We didn't talk at all about kind of how stealth works, about your like level of detection. We didn't talk about you know senses. We didn't talk about stuff like that. Of all the different conditions that no. there are. And and who knows? We um, may we may dig into that stuff at a later a later date. We'll see. Um, yeah, but like I feel like you're you know at least until we we'll, we'll cover exploration in the next episode. But I would think with this now you'd be ready just to go, kind of go and play. Oh yeah yeah uh, a, a game. I, well, I, you know, this kind of basics, I'm ready to, I'd be ready to jump in now. You know, you, you helped me through a lot of this before the game I played. So, yeah, you have to be ready after after this description. I think this was pretty good. Um, okay, cool. All right. Well, awesome. Um, so if you kind of like what you're watching, um, do a like, do a subscribe. Got to ask that. We're not looking to be famous. <laughs> it's just would be cool to see those numbers go up. Not looking to be famous. Yeah. Um, and... You'll see a couple probably on the side there. You'll see another video for the other Pathfinder. I'll have a link there. Um, but hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, I'm Carl with... I'm Eric. With Eric. And this <laughs> is uh, Tabletop Tango. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Stay safe.